Hiya. It is Sunday the 26th of September 2021. I'm ZM and this week's text on the White Pube is a review of a film called Manifesto by Anna Hjorta Gutu. Um, it was a film I saw at Berwick Film Festival, but this review is also just chatting about art school, to be honest. Um, and you'll see why. <laughs> I'll get straight to it. Um, I remember when I told my parents I wanted to go to art school. My dad started ringing me every day because he thought I was in crisis and acting out. My mum would sit me down at dinner t- at the dinner table and ask me to think about this all reasonably and practically. She took me to, a re- to go see a religious man who told me the stars weren't in the right place for this decision. What's the plan? they'd both ask. To them, art school was somewhere you went to avoid making plans. It was dreamland, a chaotic void, an abyss. I went anyway because I hate being told what to do. I applied to Central St Martins because, I swear to God, that's where MIA went. (laughs) I wanted newness to just pour out of my open mouth, like I was being violently and uncontrollably sick. If art school was a chaotic void, I wanted to enter that void with my hands in the air, screaming. St Martin's was a weird place. I still look back and feel like it was a fever dream, because those were the wildest three years of my life. It had its quirks, and they formed me. Like, every month or so, someone would start a rumour that Kanye West was going to do a secret gig in the platform bar. I remember the day he walked around on a tour of the building and everyone lost their fucking minds. I remember that everyone would keep an eye out for Antonio Banderas because he was doing a remote learning MA and everyone thought he came in at the weekends to use the library. I remember the drama students walking into the canteen barefoot and Gab whispered to me, if they're late back to rehearsal, they get sent home for the day so they don't even have time to put their shoes back on. I remember finding out that one of my classmates was a literal baron and laughing because he'd seen my tits on a photo shoot in second year. I remember being in the smoking section of a club and a lad came up to me saying, you're in that Pharrell Williams video. And I thought it was a shit chat up line, but he pulled it up on his phone and there I was walking across Granary Square on my way to go get lunch from prep. I remember being sat in the studio watching first dates on someone's laptop when a delegation from North Korea came round on a guided tour. They waved, took pictures of us all, hunched around the laptop and then left. This is God's honest truth. (laughs) I went to Berwick Film Festival a few weekends ago. On the whole, it was unexpectedly chaotic. So I wouldn't know where to start a review of the festival itself. I just had a lovely time on a mini break I wasn't paying for. I went for a run along the beach, I went on a boat trip and thoroughly enjoyed an all-you-can-eat full English breakfast buffet. So 10 out of 10, had a lovely time. The programme itself was good, but out of all the films I saw, Manifesto by Anna Hyotogutu was the one that stuck with me. Manifesto is a film about an art school that has recently been absorbed into a large national university. It flicks between interviews with staff and students, wide shot of the wide shots of the new university building, and little bits where it follows people around while they narrate problems or ideas to do with the building. The film opens with a scruffy looking middle aged man in corduroys and a V neck jumper. He stands in a clean, concrete corridor in front of a heavy metal door. He points down at a brick and says, They're quite essential. He shovels the brick over with his foot to prop the door open. He looks back at the camera like his point has been demonstrated. It's so simple, so beautiful. Two people sit at a desk and show us photos of the old art school building. It was ratty and a bit old, but it had a free, open vibe that worked well. A proper art school. One photo has paint splatters across the wall in the background. 
this is how an art school should look. But if you leave a paint stain like this here in this school, there'll be such a commotion, it isn't allowed. As the film unfolds, it becomes a bit clearer. When this art school was absorbed into the larger, slicker university, something essential began to disappear. Something else also started to emerge. Their old building had a normal door with normal keys and an entrance that wasn't policed. There was a communal kitchen to cook meals and be together in community. Now there's a huge and frightening glass entrance with key cards that can be used to track movement through the building. They now have to buy meals from a cafe as customers rather than active subjects enacting care through cooking. Students speak about the anxiety of feeling like they're being watched in the studio. It made them start acting like they think... It's that made them start acting how they think an art student should act, rather than just actually being art students. A title flashes up. It reads, We don't recognise our school. I remember walking into the wide open space of CSM's main building for the first time. It was like being in a big old cathedral or the slick corporate headquarters of a massive conglomerate. It was 2013, I was 19, and it scared me so much I nearly cried on the top deck of the bus back home. Everything was chrome, concrete and natural light. The floors were buffered and polished. You couldn't even open the windows because there was a centralised air circulation system. You needed key cards to get into the studios and your key cards would only open the doors of the studio you were assigned to. I remember they experimented with opening up key card access to foster a more open cross-curricular environment, but they had to shut it down after a few weeks because someone's laptop got nicked. One time, my friends used their key cards to sneak someone who didn't go to CSM in through the entrance barriers, and they were stopped by security. Their key cards were confiscated for the day, and they were told that if they tried that again, they'd be banned from the building permanently. I went to art school in 2013, and I was one of the first years to pay nine grand a year for the privilege of higher education. 2013 was a weird and sticky time. Things felt transitional. We were halfway in under the coalition government. We knew things would get bad, but we didn't know the extent of what was to come. CSM was an art school in the stomach of a huge bureaucratic beast, and even though my little certificate says university in big letters, the bones of a radical art school were still in the process of being dissolved in all that bile and acid. We're being taught by tutors who didn't quite believe in the professional development modules they were being made to deliver to us. We were made aware that we were in an arts university rather than an art school and we quickly realised the gulf of difference between those two things. We saw little exceptions peek through in ways I don't think would be possible anymore. Now the gulf of difference has widened or maybe it's harder to convey the existence um, of a difference in the first place. I think the exceptions have disappeared too, or it's become harder to interject with them. That same year, in 2013, The Undercommons by Fred Moten and Stefano Harney was published. I can't lie, I still haven't read it, even though I know I probably should. I think the gist of it is, neoliberalism is obviously a head fuck, but specifically, Universities have become corporate and professional entities. This means universities are structured and funded to serve the interests of capital and the state. Moton and Harney denounce this professionalisation of knowledge and define the basis for new oppositional solidarities that defy easy categorisation. The Undercommons describes a space away from that capitalist pipeline, Inhabited by people who have been denied resources, excluded, fugitive. Moton and Harney use the term maroon communities. The undercommons feels parallel or related to Spivak's subaltern. And I think it's interesting that academia has so many different terms for the kinds of people that are purposefully kept outside of systems. This fugitive space 
feels exciting and live because it contains everything that doesn't fit neatly into the institution's bureaucratic structure. So all these split ends, these odd shapes and hangnails just filter across into an underbelly. I don't know what comes next. I don't know what happens once that underbelly is inhabited. I don't know what the new oppositional solidarity, according to Moten and Harney, looks like in practice. But back to the film. Frustrated by the imposition of this new bureaucratic and professionalised structure, the old art school goes underground within the National University. If they take away the communal kitchen, the art school builds a contained mobile kitchen unit disguised as a temporary studio wall. It's complete with worktops, hot plate stove and running water. The camera watches on as they unfold the kitchen, demonstrate how the pipe system works uh, for the sink works and show us the fixtures that keep everything secure and hidden. They fold it out and back in. Now it's just a gallery wall again. If the closed air circulation system means windows can't be opened, they make copies of window keys for everyone and disguise them as USB sticks. There are fake courses for the digital system and real courses on a secret booking system. The real courses are disguised as an artwork and it hangs in the programme coordinator's office, just behind their desk. The fake courses don't actually exist, but every, everyone in the higher system thinks they're real. The fake courses have names thick with art speak, descending away from clarity. The non-being of representation, challenging the biopolitical, othering the Swede, snorking the snork. Another administrator casually reveals that the names were made using an online art speak generator, which made me snort out loud in the cinema. He smirks, but it's serious. The university requires courses be taught by practitioners with an MA, but the art school can give you credits from a course called Disgusting Mixtures, taught by three students. Most importantly, the art school elect their own management. There's a fake dean of students, a pseudo dean on paper, who goes to some meetings and sends bullshit reports to keep up appearances. But the real elected rector is the building's cleaner. She maintains an overview and keeps things running, while the admin is just sorted out at arm's length. The bureaucracy that is meant to be so central to everyday operations within this corporate university is just shifted off to the side. They get on with things, away from the prying eyes of the system. Moten and Harney describe the conversion of students and staff from insurgents into state agents. The university is a kind of pipeline for transformation. It takes unstable quantities and makes them solid and bankable. In the three years I was there, I realised St Martin's, the art school, was dead. The place I thought I was going, where MIA and the Queen went, that place didn't physically exist anymore. It only existed in the memory of some of our tutors who would, at times, be complicit in our conspiracies and rebellions. They would say, remember that you're in an institution. Cryptic crossword clue. They'd melt back into the fog they emerged from. Eventually, it clicked. We were in an institution, but we were also being trained up in how to fight back. Nothing as material or significant as the interve interventions in Manifesto, but in small ways. Me and my friends robbed our tuition fees worth in library books. We befriended print technicians and bar staff who'd let us use their staff discounts. We gossiped with our tutors. Best of all, we started writing about exhibitions in our fight back voices and people started to listen to us. My problem with theory is that I always want an example, something to demonstrate it all in practice. While I don't know what Fred Moten and Stefano Harney intend new oppositional solidarity to be, I know what Anna Hjorta Gutu thinks it could look like. Manifesto isn't real. As uncanny as it all looks, it's not a documentary, it's fiction. But in that fiction, it breaks through to the other side of something that could exist. 
It doesn't pine after the old dead art school or fall back on romance or nostalgia. Instead, it presents us with a vision of a para institution running alongside and underneath to the structure that ask, asks for its compliance and complicit participation. It responds with disguise, sleight of hand. It is funny because ultimately this is an art school, not a spy thriller. These people are tutors and, ad- and administrators, not moles or actual literal insurgents. <clears throat> but I think that's the fun of fiction. It has the ability to expand and stretch out, present us with something new in extremity. A title flashes up. It reads, we have to organise. So imagine this model of a para-institution. Everyone in the main institution who is required to act in compliance with those interests of capital and state is secretly acting against those exact interests. They play pretend bureaucracy, pretend to be state agents, but really they're all double agents acting to undermine the system from the inside. Now, apply it across another institution, one that isn't an art school. Maybe instead of a huge national university, it is a huge national museum. I don't normally believe in one person's ability to change things from the inside. But maybe it's a collective effort. Maybe all the curators, administrators, registrars, etc. They're all in cahoots with the artists and front of house staff to make sure they're able to have a good time, get paid well, do good work and have job stability. Imagine if we all just played fast and loose with the admin and bullshit. If we all decided to game the fucking system. It wouldn't be cheating then, if we all did it. If we were organised, it would just be the way things are. I know I always whip this quote out, badly paraphrase it, but it's just the best wording of something so complex and unwieldy. In Morgan Quaintance's essay, Teleology and the Turner Prize, he locates the specific and loaded value of arts education. A rigorous conceptual training where critical ability is developed through discussion, group critique, lecture and written assessment. It produces critically engaged actors who are aware of the governmental, financial and ideological forces that move to co-opt their output. They produce art that problematises and draws critical attention to its modes of display and exchange, as well as the culture, society and politics that made that display and exchange possible. I keep whipping that quote out because it's a comprehensive way of saying it can get meta, complicated, sticky, but art schools produce people who know how to handle that complexity and how to make that complexity something potentially dangerous for the interests of capital and the state. I think anyone that went to art school would agree that those were the three weirdest fucking years of their life. We're all bound by the experience, an insider logic that's defined by being part of a structure that repels you while demanding your participation and also requires your dissent. It makes me laugh because I know how this sounds, but I think art school radicalised me. It only works if it changes you. And I think that I was changed for the better. I went into a chaotic void and in Moton and Harney's words, I plopped out the other end of it, a fully equipped insurgent. The film ends with a vision of this para-institutional art school in full swing. When the sun goes down, the students and staff wheel out the mobile kitchen and gather to make a meal together. They stand about, laughing and chatting and singing and being together in community. Capitalism loves alienation. It loves individual as individuals as single units, but this is a vision of a social body made up of so many moving parts, all relating to each other caring and intertwined. Manifesto is a good name for this film because theory is all well and good, but I want examples. 
a para-institutional model that demonstrates a practical example for new oppositional solidarities in action. It's a mouthful. But now, at least, I know what it looks like.